5.3 Recording of Disposal of Fixed or Tangible Assets So thus far we've worked out that we can add more fixed assets or that we can simply use the fixed assets that we had and therefore they lose value called depreciation. Now the third change that occurs in my fixed and tangible assets is if I dispose of one of my assets. In other words, I sold or I'm selling one of my assets. So it's very important that you understand how the disposal process happens in our books. Therefore we're going to spend quite a lot of time in explaining this. So according to the historical cost concept, the value of the fixed assets must be shown at the cost price of the asset in the financial records of the business. However, according to the prudence concept, it must also be shown at the most realistic value at a specific time. So in order to comply with both of these principles, the initial cost price of vehicles or equipment are shown in the actual vehicles and equipment accounts in the general ledger. And then the total depreciation that has already been written off over the years of the vehicle are shown in the accumulated depreciation accounts. So it's easy to then calculate the carrying value um, at any given point in time. So the carrying value can therefore easily be determined by deducting the accumulated depreciation from the cost price of the vehicles or equipment. Whenever a non-current asset, in other words vehicles or equipment, are sold, it must be determined exactly what the carrying value of the asset is on the precise date when it was sold. So you have to be able to work out the depreciation up to date of selling. The difference between this is because the carrying value is compared to the selling price. If it is a profit on sale of asset or a profit on disposal of asset, the selling price would be more than the carrying value. But if it's a loss on sale of asset, the selling price would be less than the carrying value. Remember the carrying value is what that asset is worth to the business. So if I sell it for more than that value, the business made a profit. If, I, however, I sold it for less than that value, the business made a loss. Let's look at an example together. So the information concerns Brooklyn traders. The financial year ends on the 30th of June. Required. Calculate the total depreciation on the day of the that the vehicle was sold. Number two, determine the carrying value. And number three, determine profit or loss on sale of asset. So the information following. The vehicle's registration number date bought. It was bought on the 1st of September 2015 for a cost price of 720000 We depreciate at a 15% per annum on the book value. And the date sold was the 1st of March 2018 for 450000 So firstly, you need to understand that when we bought it, 10 months, we still used it for 10 months in that year and then it was the end of the year for depreciation. So depreciation is usually done at the end of the year as part of our adjustments. So therefore the following year we use it for a full 12 months and then depreciate it. Now the last depreciation would then have occurred on the 30th of June 2017. Then we went and we sold it on the 1st of March. Now the 1st of March is in my year. It's not yet the end of the year. It's year in the middle somewhere. So therefore I would not actually have depreciated this until the end of the year. But now I've, I'm selling it so I'm, I need to determine the carrying value on this date. So therefore I make they make an exception and they say you are allowed now to depreciate it for the last bit of the time that you've used it. In other words, from the 1st of July 2017 up to the 1st of March. So that gives you July, August, September, October, November, December, January and February. Remember, because I sell it on the 1st of March, I don't count March. So therefore, I've used it for the further 
eight months into my new year. So now when depreciation is determined, I need to pay close attention to my dates. So the first one, my first date is for the 10 months within that first year. So I had it for 720,000 for what I bought it. It's the first year I had it, so there's no accumulated depreciation yet. 15% for 10 of the 12 months tells me that I've lost a total of 90,000 Rand value in that first year for the first 10 months. Now remember this on diminishing balance method or carrying value, value method. So in my second year, I still, I bought it for 720, but in the first year it already lost 90,000 Rand value. So I decreased my value with 90,000 Rand. Still times it with 15 over 100 and then I had it for a full year, 12 over 12 months. So in my second year it lost value of 94,500. Now be careful because in my third year I need to go and add these two amounts together. Because first year it lost 90, second year it lost 94,500 so in total it lost 100. And 84,500 Rand value. Now this is important because in my third year I want to now go and calculate for the last eight months. So in other words it started with 720 cost. It lost a total of 184,500. I then times it still by 15% but this time I only had it for eight of the 12 months. So a total value of 53,550 was lost in that third year. So now if I add all of it up to get my total accumulated depreciation, in other words, from the date that I bought it up to the date that I sold it, it lost a total of 238,050 Rand value, this piece of equipment or this vehicle. Question number two, determine the carrying value on the day it was sold. So carrying value, remember, my cost price is unchanged for 720, but the accumulated depreciation is the, the very important factor here. I cannot just use the accumulated depreciation up to the first year or even up to the second year. It has to be the accumulated depreciation up to the date that I've sold it. That's going to give me the most accurate carrying value. So in in other words, the accumulated depreciation up to the date that I've sold it, we've just calculated it, as 238,050 Rand. Therefore, leaving my carrying value to be 481,950. So now that I've got my value, in other words, what this vehicle is worth to me, to the business, I can now go and determine what is the loss or profit on the sale of assets. So in other words, I will now take... What did I sell it for? I sold it for 450000 However, it was worth to me 481950 So therefore, I've actually sold it for less than what it was worth to me, therefore causing it to be a loss on sale of asset for 31950 Rand loss in my books. Just out of interest sake for you now, this loss on sale of asset, that's going to cause an expense account by the name of loss on sale of asset in my books. So therefore this 31950 is going to cause a loss, which means it's going to decrease my profits at the end of the year.